Maximilian Kolbe was founded about 40 years ago uh, by Father Stan Back at the Holy Name of Mary uh, School. Well, he got permission from the Cardinal at the time, uh, Carter, to start surveying Mississauga and finding people to join the parish. And so he got a telephone book, he opened it up, looked for Polish names, called them, knocked on doors, and he had his first list of parishioners. And uh, with this list, they went to the, uh, the diocese. The diocese accepted the, the mission. Uh, after the mission was created, they began to collect donors to build the church. And once they found that there was a, a good mass of, of interested people in, in donating, the, the full mission status of the of uh, Father Stan and the, and the parish began. And they started looking for a site. And they found this site about five years later. And building actually began uh, pretty much five years after that. Uh, this building itself is gonna come up on 30 years, I believe, uh, this, this coming year. And um, in that time, that first list, I think there was uh, about 600 people on that first list. Uh, we now have about 14,000 families uh, signed up in the parish, which represents about 39,000 people. Uh, we did have a visit uh, from the Pope, but uh, probably a more important uh, uh, time was when the cornerstone of the church was taken to Castel Gandolfo to be blessed by the Pope. Uh, he blessed that early on. Our parish is very dynamic in the sense that it's open to very many different ways of exploring your faith and your spirituality and then coming together in a public way and celebrating that, that discovery. Uh, some churches who have small communities, you're really limited to maybe you have to pray the rosary or you're a member of the Vincent de Paul Society or you do something but your life may not be as full as you want it to be. Our parish gives you the opportunity to burn out in your faith. Uh, there are so many things you can do here that you can transfer into your normal life. Uh, you can learn, for example, to be more prayerful and patient in life. And this, this can be put into your regular life as well. Uh, you can learn to be very patient and, uh, and uh, open to other people and other ideas. Because we do have very many, many different uh, people in our parish. Uh, I know, for example, my, my nephew who uh, works in, in construction, uh, he's always amazed when I tell him that the people we have in church, and he goes, no, those people don't exist. And I said, yeah, I just talked to him. Like, we, we have uh, uh, sportsmen and women. Uh, last year we had, um, or two years ago, one of the sponsors in our RCA program was the head coach for the Canadian Olympic team for uh, judo. And so we have many authors here that are well known. We have many uh, people who work hard cutting kielbasa and, uh, and sausage. And we work, live together. And it's a, an amazing experience where you can see the call of each person and how we live together. And this is perfect to take out in the rest of the world. So when you're in a Tim Hortons parking lot and somebody cuts you off, there's a good chance you'll think twice before you start yelling at them. We have seven Sunday Masses on the weekends, and we have two Masses during the, each weekday. So you can see that people want to do this more often than just on a Sunday. Uh, that's the core public celebration. Liturgy means uh, the public celebration of God. Um, but we have also many spiritual and private uh, things that we do in our building. One of them is the Chapel of Perpetual Adoration. Uh, we have Stations of the Cross at the back of the church. Uh, that's, that prayer is usually said by penitents after or before uh, reconciliation. And very often by the entire community during Lent. So we, we pick uh, a week and one church group. We have about 30 church groups. And one church group takes one of the Stations of the Cross during the week and uh, host it for the entire community. We also have the Rosary Society that meets once a month. Uh, they lead the uh, Rosary prayer before each Mass. And uh, 
The Society itself has about 1,200 members, I believe. And they exchange the mysteries of the faith, and they pray it regularly. Uh, the, the church is a family, though. It's not separated into many different uh, organizations. And we meet and center our celebration on the Mass. And we have many rites through the year. We have uh, Christ the King. We have the Resurrection Mass. We have uh, the Mass of Corpus Christi. And that's when all the communities get together and we form our one community. And uh, we very often are members of many, many communities uh, or organizations. The, the rites themselves are traditional rites that we celebrate as Christians all around the world. And the communities come together at those times to share and be with each other. And what we find is that the same faces are duplicated over and over again in these organizations, that people just can't get enough of being in our, in our parish. Um, and to tell you about welcoming new people, uh, we have a program called RCIA, and these are really new people. RCIA is the Rite of Christian Initiation of Adults. And what it is, is it's not an evangelical program. It's just a formation program for people who have heard the calling of God and want to become full Catholics. There are people who are Muslims, there are people who are, are Hindus, there are people who are, uh, uh, have no faith whatsoever. Uh, but you can see in them, in their lives, a, a, an amazing movement uh, and being touched by God. And they're seeking a community they want to join. And we're so blessed to have them here because it renews us as well. When they speak to us about their, their faith journey, our journey seems to light up. It seems to be much, much more uh, vivid and alive and not so, so textbook. You never know when God is going to call you. You never know when you have to make a decision in your life. And there's a, a point where you have to discern, discern whether you're following the, the, the voice of right and the voice of wrong. And our hope is, as a community, that this is the ideal place to make that decision. Uh, we can only assume that, that God will bless us because we are His children uh, for no other reason. It can't be because we're worthy, because we're not. And I think in the hope of this blessing, that this is the ideal place, I think all of us who take part in this community really want to give back to our, our our Father. And if it is the ideal place, I hope it is, it is only because that God loves us and not because of our own work, although we do want to give back to God.